Let's take a look at when shares are issued at par value. Remember, par value is just an arbitrary amount that a company sets for the value of their stocks. We're going to go through a series of questions to explain how to account for common stock. What I would like you to do is read each question carefully, watch my explanations, then rewind the video, go back to the beginning of the question and do the question on your own. When you're doing the question, make sure you're actually putting it down on paper. Then when you've completed, you can check your solution against my solution here. This particular question deals with issuing shares at par value. It says, assume that 100,000 shares of common stock are issued for $10 per share. Record the issuance of the shares, assuming a $10 par value. So first, let's take a look at how much cash we're going to raise with the stock issue. We're issuing 100,000 shares and we're issuing them for $10 each. So we are going to raise $1 million in cash. You're going to debit cash because cash increased, but let's see what you're going to do with the credit side. Whenever you see a par value for a stock, so in this case, you know that the par value is $10, the amount of the par value for the stocks gets credited to an account called common stock. In this case, since we're issuing our stocks at par value, everything will get credited to common stock. So your journal entry will be, you're going to debit cash, cash increased. You're going to debit cash for $1 million and you're going to credit common stock for $1 million. Remember, again, common stock will be credited for the amount of the par value of the stock. As you know, common stock is a stockholder equity account and stockholder equity accounts are increased by credit. So our common stock just increased by $1 million and that's why we credited common stock. This question takes a look at issuing stock above par value. It says assume that 10,000 shares of common stock are issued for $22 per share. For each situation below, prepare a journal entry and indicate the effect of each alternative on assets and stockholders equity. So for the first question, what they're asking is record the issuance of the shares assuming a $10 par value. First, let's see how much cash we're going to receive from this stock issue. We're going to issue 10,000 shares for $22 per share. We're going to receive 10,000 times 22, $220,000 for this stock issuance. Now, how do we record it in a journal entry? At, for what accounts do we debit and credit? Cash went up by 220,000, so you know that we're going to debit cash for 220,000. Now, what about the credit side? We know that this stock has a $10 par value. The par value amount goes into an account called common stock. So we will have common stock increase by 100,000. How did we get that 100,000? It is the 10,000 shares times $10 par value gives us $100,000. Now your journal entry is not in balance. You know that for a journal entry, your debits have to equal your credits. You have 220,000 in your debits and $100,000 for your credit. The difference between the par value and your issue price so your par value is $10, your issue price is $22. The difference between that goes to an account called paid in capital in excess of par. The total is $120,000. $120,000 is the difference between what you raised, $220,000, and the par value, which is $100,000. Now, paid in capital in excess of par is also a stockholder equity ac account. It increases by credits to the normal credit balance. And sometimes it can be called additional paid in capital. So if you see an account called additional paid in capital, it is the same thing as paid in capital in excess of par. Now, going back to chapter one, you remember that each transaction affects the accounting equation. The accounting equation is assets equals liabilities plus stockholders equity. They want you to show what the effect of each alternative 
is on assets and stockholders' equity. We, we're going to look at several situations later, but for this particular situation, you know that assets increased by 220000 because cash went up by 220000 So did stockholders' equity. Stockholders' equity also increased by 220000 Common stock went up by 100000 Paid in capital in excess of par went up by 120000 Therefore, stockholders' equity also increased by 220000 now let's take a look at a situation where we are going to issue stock with no par value. It says assume that 10,000 shares of common stock are issued for $22 per share and then they want you to record the issuance of the shares assuming it's no par stock. Again, first thing, let's see how much cash we're going to raise. So the amount of cash we're going to receive is 10,000 times $22, which is 220000 So our cash increases by 220000 We are issuing no par stock. When we issue stock that does not have a par value, the entire amount is credited to the common stock account. So for your journal entry, what you're going to do is you're going to debit cash for 220000 and you're going to credit common stock for 220000 your assets increased by 220,000 because your cash went up by 220, and your stockholders' equity also increased by 220,000 because your common stock went up by 220,000. Next, let's take a look at issuing common stock in exchange for equipment, in exchange for a long term asset. This is very common for a company that is starting up a lot of times, the owners will invest assets rather than cash into the business. The market value of the assets that they invested into the business is their ownership in the business. It is how much they have invested in the business. So now what we need to do is take a look at how we would account for that kind of situation. This question says, assume that 10,000 shares of common stock are issued for $22 per share. It says record the issuance assuming that the $10 par stock was issued in exchange for equipment with a market value of $220,000. First, let's take a look at what we issued. We issued 10,000 shares for $22 each, which is a value of $220,000. For this $220,000, we received equipment with a market value of $220,000. When you're doing the journal entry, keep in mind that this stock had a $10 par value. So what you're going to do is you're going to debit equipment for $220,000. Your equipment increased by $220,000, which is the market value of the equipment. In exchange, we issued common stock. We're going to credit common stock for $100,000. How did we get that $100,000? It is a $10 par value times the 10,000 shares that we issued. Now your journal entry is still not in balance. To make it balance, we need to credit paid in capital in excess of par for 120,000. Now your journal entry is in balance. Again, how we got that 120,000 is it's a difference between the market value of the equipment, so the market value of 220,000 less the par value which is 100,000, the difference is 120,000, and that is credited to paid in capital in excess of par. For this transaction, your assets increased by 220,000, so did your stockholders' equity. That also increased by 220,000. The final situation we're going to take a look at is when we issue stock in exchange for services. It says, assume 10,000 shares of common stock are issued for $22 per share. It says, record the issuance, assuming that the $10 par stock was issued in exchange for legal services. First, let's take a look at what we issued. We issued 10,000 shares for $22 for a value of $220,000. What did we receive in exchange? We received legal services. When you're doing a journal entry, keep in mind the stock has a $10 par value. Now let's go ahead and do your journal entry. We are going to debit legal expenses 
for the value of the stock that we issued. That is the market value of the services that we received, 220000 Now, let's do the credit side. You know that you're going to credit common stock for $100,000, which is the par value of your common stock. It's $10 times 10,000 shares. Your journal entry is still not in balance, so what we do is we credit paid in capital in excess of par for the difference, which is $120,000. Now let's take a look at the effect of this transaction on assets and on stockholders' equity. This transaction did not affect assets in any way, so the effect on assets is zero. It did not increase or decrease assets. Let's look at how it affected stockholders' equity. Stockholders' equity increased by 220000 because we increased our common stock and we increased paid in capital in excess of par. However, from Chapter 1 and 2, you remember that expenses affect retained earnings. Retained earnings are also part of stockholders' equity. So, this particular side of your journal entry decreased stockholders' equity by 220000 So, the common stock and paid-in capital increased it by 220 Legal expenses decreased it by 220 giving a net effect of zero for stockholders' equity as well. The increases and decreases in this particular transaction were all within the stockholders' equity portion of your accounting equation. Now be sure to go back and redo these questions so that you have enough practice. When you complete a section on your own, be sure to compare it against the solution that I provided in these videos.